My name is Paola Espinosa. I'm a senior pipeline planning for vegetable R&D in Bayer Crop Science Division. Bayer focuses on, focuses on selling seed to farmers, whether it's corn, soy, or vegetables. So today I work with um, our R&D division all across the Americas from Chile to Canada. We're making sure that we are producing products that farmers will want to, want to plant in their farms and produce the yummy produce that you see at a farmer's market or a grocery store. So in 2013, I graduated from the University of Arizona with a biosystems engineering degree. My degree had a focus with engineering and as well as uh, agriculture. So I had an internship right before moving on to the professional space with Sweet Sorghum in the field where we were collecting data and really managing research trials within the university. So when I started looking for jobs, I was very attracted to the agricultural industry. So I research companies that work with agriculture and a lot of the new technology as well. So I found a job with Bayer uh, in the island of Hawaii. So I think where I found the job had a little bit to do. Hawaii was amazing. But the other piece is that we can grow up to four cycles of corn in Hawaii, which meant I, it was very fast paced. Uh, at one point, I managed four cycles of corn in a year uh, to give you some perspective in Nebraska, we can do one cycle of corn a year. So what we can do 10 years in uh, the mainland United States can get be done in three and a half years in Hawaii. So I think people that do really well in this space are people that are continuously learning. Um, you know, uh, there's some things that we are cutting edge to edge technology. So that spirit of wanting to experiment, being creative, continue to learn, people really enjoy that. As well as making sure that you bring boldness to the table. I think that's another thing that in our industry, because there's so much things that we're patenting new things, the ideas are flowing everywhere and just making sure that whatever you learn and you bring to the table, you put it out there and you promote it. I think those are really good. On the other, on the more technical side of things, project management is a big one. Uh, making sure that you're learning that from your classes, especially in the engineering degree. I know there's some classes. Making sure that you can manage a project, timelines, resources. Those are all very important things. Um, and yeah, I think there's a lot of exciting opportunities. I would say look uh, at companies that you wouldn't think of looking. Everybody's hiring an engineer. Everybody's hiring um, uh, some sort of science uh, related because we can use data for a lot of things these days. So with my biosystems engineering degree, what I did a lot and really it was a lot of learning through my internships that I was able to secure throughout my degree. I reached out to professors within uh, my my department and they had several research grants that I could participate, I could jump on. And what I did is focus into controlled environment systems, irrigation, um, plant, like a lot more related to plant work. So that really gave me the capabilities of coming into the agricultural um, industry. So what I did, um, what I do use for my engineering degree, I would say a lot of your Excel skills like coding, VBA, those, again, data is really what's helping everybody right now manage their operations. So I, I, I would say take, if you like data, if you're seeing that you're naturally good at it, take more classes on data management, data systems, computer sciences, all of that. I know personally for me, we had a class of advanced Excel and coding through Excel. That was really helpful. Um, SOLIDWORKS and that stuff, that type of mapping and digitalizing um, it, structures, that also has come in handy. I, as I move throughout my career, I be, I've become less technical and more managerial. So uh, of course I don't use those anymore, but early in my career, being able to map workflows, to map uh, spaces, to manage data, were some things that were really key and that set me apart from other candidates uh, as I was entering the workforce.
So the agricultural industry is facing so many challenges today. We have climate change, which means our variables when we're trying to grow um, fruits, vegetables, are completely changing the game of how we did 10 years ago. On top of nutrients, uh, there's so many variables when trying to, to grow uh, produce. So with those challenges come opportunities. Right now, I worked uh, for seven years with a team that introduced different genetic traits so that har uh, farmers could manage their crops better, like uh, insect resistant traits or even drought resistant traits. Farmers in Africa are really, really struggling with the water supply. And even here in California, I'm in California today, and we've been on a drought for a while now. So um, I think there's a lot of opportunities opportunity in our industry to create new technologies. The other thing is data is really conquering. Before we thought of a farm as a unit, now we look at specific squirt feed, what are the nutrients, what are the right um, uh, seeds that can go into your squared foot so that you can be successful as a farmer. So there's a lot of room for computer science, for data engineers to come into the system because in the end we want to make um, produce our product that we're selling to the farmers, which is seeds, as efficiently as possible. And then in the other hand, provide those um, nice products that the farmers will have a more efficient uh, operation. Because in reality, we are exponentially growing as a population, the resources are more scarce. So that's where minds like yours and mine come into play where we can make sure that we're creating solutions for those problems. So I have three things that I can recommend to you that you can start doing today. First, don't think that you need to know everything. You can uh, really keep growing as you continue to grow in your profession. So as long as you're passionate about something, I would say go for it. Don't be scared. Two, network. Uh, a lot of networking comes from the opportunities you have within your school. Uh, so attend those career, <laughs> career uh, uh, opportunities that are offered or find jobs within your school. Something that really helped me personally throughout my career was jobs at school. I worked at a chemistry lab. I, I worked at an educational consortium uh, and I worked with the internship uh, with agricultural engineers. All of those became my, my web of network that when I was looking for jobs, I had somebody that could give me a letter of recommendation or that, or that could connect me with their network make sure that you're really making those intentional connections. Be very intentional on how you spend your time within your last year of your career and make sure that you're creating connections. Number one, it's fun. Number two, you'll probably meet somebody that can introduce you to something and you'll never know what that brings you. And then number three, do something that's authentic to you. When you're in school, you're going through all these different subjects. Try to be uh, self-aware of what's really calling to you, what are you really enjoying doing, and then go down that rabbit hole. Look up an industry is that have something of what you're really liking. Because in the end, when you find a job, yes, it is important to pay the bills, but it's also important that you stay engaged because the more that you're engaged, the better that you're going to perform and show up at that industry. So make sure that you're taking some time and really focusing on what you really like and try to go and gravitate towards the job opportunities that will have those elements. When I was on campus, the things that I would try to do were look and make connections with my professors, with my peers, people. I was an undergrad, but talking to graduate students, connecting with them, uh, creating working groups with them in my classes. Hey, let's do homework together. And through that, I was able to find an internship within my division. Um, it, they actually weren't even hiring at all. So what I did, I was bold and I asked, hey, I've noticed that you're harvesting sweet sorghum at our SEAC. Can I be part of the harvest? So I volunteered. And through that volunteering, I got hired into a 
a full-on internship. And that really gave me experience of writing about the internship, collecting data, getting certified for different things that were needing for that needed for that research. I also connected with people that I still talk to to this day. So one of my graduate students that I work with, um, really started pulling me into all of the research because they started noticing this person's really good for this thing. How about even if we don't have uh, uh, something opening, let's bring her in and see if she can volunteer some of her time. So I think making sure that you're connecting, you know, everybody in school is there to learn, but it's also there to figure out what's next for them. And professors are extremely willing and happy to lend that hand. Go to the office hours, make sure that you're talking to them, creating that personal connection. I remember one of my professors um, through going to office hours offered me, hey, there's this opportunity for us for a scholarship while I was still in school. I applied, he gave me a recommendation letter. Hey, guess what? I had extra money for pay, to pay for school. So all of these things help me not just to develop um, a professional relationship with somebody, but also to make sure that as when I was looking for, for jobs, they open their networks to me. The other thing that I would recommend is make sure you're intentional about this. Be professional, show up with your hair done, show up with a nice shirt, you know, make sure that you're showing up how you would want your coworkers to see you, because those are things that they're going to notice and they're going to use to put to put in that word for you. What that is called is sponsorship. If they see you performing, having good image, having good commitment, coming through with what you say you're going to do, they're going to sponsor you, which means that whenever you're not present, they're going to say good things about you. And that is what gets you jobs.